Yes. Once and for all. Why don't, you know, I'm sitting here thinking of being cartel. Why don't, why don't we just simply break this thing down? Break it down. Break it down. Break it down. Break it down. Pull in these scriptures. Let me show you how to break it down. 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 Yo. All right. So today. Are you qualified to pray for people? Interesting topic. I was also, also going to name it. Uh, one of the names I was thinking was. Why I don't ask just anyone to pray for me. So. Take a look at some of these verses. And. We're going to start off in the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah 11, 14. Jeremiah 11, 14. Actually, let me switch the version because I don't really like this version. Sometimes it's hard to understand well I don't I'm not used to speaking old English so. yeah. all right Jeremiah 11 14 says Do not pray for these people or offer any plea or petition for them because I will not listen when they call to me in the time of their distress. Now when you go back, go up a little bit, it gives you a title. Talk about the covenant is broken. I mean, the Israelites are breaking the covenant of the Lord, the agreement that they have with them. So this is part of one of his replies. Um, do not pray for these people uh, and what he's speaking to um, Jeremiah do not pray for these people or offer any plea or petition for them because I will not listen when they call to me in the, in the time of their distress now this is because they have rebelled against the Lord they rebelled against God breaking this covenant so he's not going to listen to them anymore because they are not listening. So we see God not listening because of disobedience. We move on to Zechariah 7.14 part 7.13 says when I called they did not listen so when they called I will not listen. You know, some let's do something. Uh, oh, that's fine. Okay. Okay. So. When I called, they did not listen. So when they called, I will not listen, says the Lord God Almighty. So we see in Zechariah 7.13 that God is not going to listen to their prayers because he was calling out to them and they wouldn't listen. Therefore, God is going to do likewise. Um, and it also reminds me of a verse in um, in the New Testament where Christ says uh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem how long have I um, wanted to gather you under our wing or gather you under my wing and you did not um, basically reply and uh, there you go you know Christ understands and of course he understood that these people would continue to rebel with him time after time continues to try to call out to him, reach out to him, and is still rebellious. And unfortunately, this is part of human nature. So moving on to the book of Ezekiel, 
5, 11. Ezekiel chapter 5, verse 11. It says, Therefore, as surely as I live, declares the Lord, the Sovereign Lord, because you have defiled my sanctuary with all your vile images and detestable practices, I myself will shave you. I will not look on you with pity or spare you. Um, what is it called? Uh, so... Maybe I was. Let me check the N New King James Version. Because I believe there's one version that says, I will not look, or I will turn my eyes from you. New King James Version, Ezekiel 5 11. And it reads. Therefore, as I live, the Lord says, the Lord God, surely because you have defiled my sanctuary with all your detestable things and with all your abominations, therefore I will also diminish you. My eye will not spare, nor will I have any pity. So, I guess when I took when I first read this, I was taking it as I will not look upon you anymore, and um, we we see that uh, in uh, future verses where uh, God actually will turn. Um, uh, turn a deaf ear, uh, and off the top of the head, I can't really remember. But um, but the the main thing is, is that when we disobey God, that He can also He can also uh, that can also um, uh, what's the word? Uh, I can't think of the word that could prevent our prayers from being heard. Moving on to the book of Psalms, chapter 13 and verses 1. It says, O long, how long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? Oh, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? And, you know, there we go again. So God hides his face, which means he's not dealing with you. He's definitely not hearing your prayers. And we see this happening with... Um, with Saul, when uh, Saul disobeyed God, and he saw other mediums and stuff like that, because God was no longer dealing with him, and this is what happens sometimes during our disobedience. God actually turns a deaf ear towards us. So, um, you know, the, so far the point is, is uh, a disobedient person may not have their prayers heard. Thus, who knows if you actually want them praying for you. Or, you know, maybe we should be a little more cautious and, you know, hey, I know these guys are doing the best to follow the Lord, so maybe ask these guys, and I can, I can ask these people as well. So maybe you could get prayers from multiple sources, so that way, in case one of us happens to be in this predicament, um, your prayer will be heard. And we can move on to the um, same book, just... Uh, chapter 66 verse 18 verse 18 says if I regard iniquity in my heart the Lord will not hear so let's do the NIV version it'll be a little bit more clear sometimes I read these in certain versions so I'll kind of like I'll catch it in that version and I'll, that's how I'll remember it so sometimes when I jot it down I like to go back to the version I heard it in um, and it says if I cherished sin in my heart the Lord will not have uh, listened um, but God has surely listened and has heard my prayer so we're talking about prayer and again this is implying that God doesn't hear our prayers when we're uh, when we have sin inside of us in our heart, or even when we're being rebellious. Now, in the book of Isaiah, chapter fifty-nine, verse two. Mm -hmm. 
it says, But your iniquities have been sep or have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. So Isaiah says it a lot more clearly where it shows our sin has separated us from God. And so during that time, God is not going to hear you. Starting at verse 1, Surely I am the Lord, I am... Uh, surely the arm of the Lord is not to be is not too short to save, nor his hear his ear too dull to hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. So it's not the fact that you're not screaming loud enough. It's not you know God can't hear you. Maybe he's doing something. It's because of our iniquities and our sin could actually in, uh, inhibit our prayers from being heard. Book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verses 24 through 28. It says, But since you refuse to listen when I call, and no one pays attention when I stretch out my, my hand, since you disregarded all my advice and do not accept my rebuke, I in turn will laugh when disaster strikes you. I will mock when calamity overtakes you. When calamity overtakes you like a storm, when disaster sweeps over you like a whirlwind, when distress and trouble overwhelm you, then they will call to me, but I will not answer. They will look for me, but I will, but will not find me. Since they hated the knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord. Once again, God, we see an example of God not only ignoring, but laughing and mocking us, or the Israelites, at least in that time, when calamity hit. So, I think that says a lot about how serious God takes this. Now, Proverbs 28 and 9 says, if anyone turns a deaf ear to my instruction, even their prayers are detestable. Now, when you hear that word detestable, we can't take that too lightly. Um, when you look up detestable, it actually means disgusting or having um, hatred towards it. So, when you turn your if you turn a deaf ear to the Lord's instructions your prayers are disgusting to him and he hates your prayers so this is a very good reason to be careful when the Lord or when we pray for people or when we pray in general got to make sure that we are qualified to pray for people and in general because if anyone turns a deaf ear to my instruction, to the Lord's instruction, even their prayers are detestable, disgusting. One sec. So that is a very powerful, powerful verse now Proverbs 21 13 says whoever shuts their ears to the cry of the poor will also cry out and be and will not and and not be answered so even believers, got, we got to understand, you know, God is dealing with the Israelites, 
that is dealing with um, the Jews, and we'll, we'll get to the New Testament. And um, basically, it doesn't matter if you're a believer or not. Um, God can still not hear your prayers. Um, it's quite interesting because I even hear people that aren't really believers will allow people to pray for them. And they're not even believers, so they're disobeying God. So their prayers are, remember, uh, disgusting and he hates it. Um, whoever shuts their ears to the cry of the poor will also cry and and not be answered. Now, in 2019 and in the many years past, we have a lot of... Um, We've had a lot, we have a lot of people that are at stoplights and they kind of hold the sign. Now, yeah, technically they didn't cry out to you, but, you know, again, you understand and God's, you know, it, just because they didn't literally cry, cry out to us doesn't mean that I didn't have to help that guy. Now, if I didn't help him, my prayers will not be answered. So even as a believer, I gotta be careful of my actions, understand these precepts and these um, scriptures about our prayers. Going back to the book of Isaiah 1, verse 15, says, When you spread out your hands in prayer, I hide my eyes from you. Even when you offer many prayers, I am not listening. Your hands are full of blood. Once again, God is not listening. And he hides his, he hides his eyes. He hides his eyes. He doesn't even have to look. He doesn't, you know what I mean? So he, even, even when you offer many prayers, it doesn't matter how many prayers. It doesn't matter how many prayers you offer up to him it doesn't mean that he's gonna listen to you and uh, all right so well yeah I could just bring it up now I didn't mark it down but uh, so even you know even when you offer many prayers also brings up the scripture and, and um, you know, Christ is talking to talking about the the people who pray in the synagogues to be seen by others show that they have received their reward those same people are not going to have are not going to be heard because of their motives because they're not qualified to pray Now moving on to Job 27 and 8 I went to wrong thing Job 27 and 8 8 through 9 and it says for what hope have the godless when they are cut off when God takes away their life does God listen to their cry when distress comes upon them no there's no hope for the godless and God is not listening to their cry Job 35 12 through 13 says he does not answer when people cry out because of the arrogance of the wicked indeed God does not listen to their empty plea the almighty pays no attention to it because of the arrogance or the pride of the wicked it is wicked to be arrogant. It is wicked to be prideful. So in our arrogance or pride, God is not going to hear us. Going 
going back to the book of Psalms in chapter 18. Uh, no, okay. 18 verses 40 and 41. It says, You made my enemies turn their backs in flight and destroyed my foes. They cried for help, but there was no one to save them to the Lord, but he did not answer. So, if you are an enemy of God's people, if there's people, you know, a lot of people like to quote, No weapon formed against us shall prosper. That has a certain context. These have their certain times. But Lord willing, when people come at him, when we have enemies and those enemies come against us, God will have mercy on us and he will not hear their cry or their prayer and he will answer them for help. Now moving on to the New Testament, we got the book of James, we're almost done. Chapter 1, verses 6 through 7. And it says, But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. So again, even as us believers, if we don't believe that he's given it to us, and we have any doubts, our prayer is not going to be heard. God's not listening. We shouldn't expect anything. In James 4. James 4 verses 3. When you ask, you do not receive. Because you ask with the wrong motives. That you, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. So there we go. Again with the wrong motives. Um, again, I think got to understand we're playing if we pray with the wrong motives or in, essentially there are situations which we can pray and the Lord is not going to hear us so if we pray with the wrong motives then the Lord is not going to hear our prayers and lastly in the book of John the book of John 9 31 it says we know that God does not listen to sinners he listens to the godly person who does his will now these are those people who were talking about Christ and how he was doing his miracles and everybody's doubting him and the people are like, well, we know God doesn't listen to, to sinners, and he did this miracle for this person. So how, so he's got to be from God. So, you know, once again, the moral of the story is, so let's be careful who we're, who's praying for us. Let's be careful of our condition when we're praying for others. And, and that's really it. Just got to be mindful of our prayer situation. Thanks again. Shabbat Shalom. Yes. Once and for all. Once and why don't you know, I'm sitting here thinking the Why don't why don't we just simply break just this thing break down? This thing down. Break it down. Break it down. Break it down. Pulling these scriptures, let me show you how to